ourselves off, we're going to go across to Kim's kitchen, who is going to show us some delicious cheesy scrolls. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our first workshop of the year. I love demonstrating these three cheese and spinach scrolls because they're so versatile and the mm -hmm. dough itself is really versatile as well. Um, as Tammy said, pop your favourites into the chat because that's how we all get to know really good recipes by recommending uh, recipes to each other. There's so many recipes on Cookie Do and it's great to have some recommendations and some favourites. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm just going into the recipe um, for the three cheese and spinach scrolls. I had it up and just as you know, when I came on the um, the – Thermomix switched itself off as it does after 15 minutes. Okay, so here we go. We'll just go into straight into it. Start cooking. Tells you to line a baking tray, which I've already done. And um, okay. Sorry about this, guys. Technical glitch. Well, I've had some problems with my Wi-Fi. I'm actually on um, my phone data at the moment, so. Bear with me for one sec. Line the baking tray. Now it's asking me to add some cheese. So we're just going to be grating some cheese in the Thermomix. So I've just got a mixture of um, tasty mozzarella and parmesan. So it says 200 grams. I just cut up a bowl of cheese. What have I got? I've got 326. That's way over, but that's okay. You can never have too much cheese on these scrolls. We just go next. Pop the lid on and we're going to be grating them at speed eight for five seconds. So how quick is that to grate some cheese? I'll show you all. And that's a lot of cheese in there. So Thermomix is just telling us to transfer that into a bowl and we will be using that to um, pop on the dough a little bit later. Okay, so there's the cheese into a bowl. Now the Thermomix is asking for 60 grams of fresh baby spinach leaves. So I'll just pop those in. I've already put too much, 84. That's absolutely fine. Extra spinach is good too. So we're just um, chopping the spinach for three seconds on speed six. And this is where you just save so much time on um, chopping and grating and things like that. There's the spinach. That's three seconds chopping up our spinach. So... I'm just going to transfer that into a bowl as well. Now, at this point, I don't, I choose not to wash the bowl. Yes, I've got a little bit of spinach around the bowl, but I like that to go through the dough anyway. So um, now we're just adding 300 grams of water. And I'll tell you why I particularly like this dough. It's so versatile. I actually use it for... Um, pizzas and everything as well. Um, the pizza dough recipe is a little bit smaller than this recipe. So there's this, there's, this recipe has more flour and less water than the pizza dough recipe, so it yields a, bit, a bigger dough. So now I'm just popping in two teaspoons of yeast. Be careful when you're making doughs and things just to make sure you put the yeast around the outside of the bowl, not in the centre because it will stick to the stem of the blades. So we've added the yeast. Now we're putting in some olive oil, 20 grams of olive oil. And how good is it that the Thermomix does all the measuring for you, unlike the traditional way of cooking? Now it's asking for a teaspoon of salt, and that will brown the bread. This is my little salt and pepper um, container from the mix shop. So good. Um then we're just popping the bowl in and we're going to be heating that water for two minutes on 37 degrees. Excuse me. I'm a clean up person as I go and I can't stand the fact that I've just 
spilt some spinach on my bench. But the thing is, with the Thermomix, you've got time to do that whilst you're cooking. Um, we know I've got two minutes now. If I wasn't on this Zoom, I'd probably be washing something or putting something away that I've already used. So with these scrolls, I've been making them for years and um, the kids love them. I make cheese and spinach, cheese and Vegemite, um, tomato and ham, just all sorts of different varieties. And they, the cheese and spinach come out to about 50 cents per scroll. So you can save yourself a lot of money by making your own breads and scrolls. Um, I think you'd probably be paying about anywhere between three fifty and five dollars for a scroll in the shops these days. So fifty cents is a bit of a bargain, and they freeze really well. So what's not eaten straight away, just pop into the freezer. And I've always my kids are too like they've all left school and everything now. They're all working, but um, just pop them straight into the freezer from the freezer to the lunchbox in the morning. By the time they eat it, it's nicely thawed. So recess or lunch. So it's a really good um, lunchbox filler. Now I'll be making big size scrolls, which you'll see in a minute, but you can make of lots of my friends with babies and I've got a little baby grandson now. So when he's up to it, I'll be making him tiny little ones. Uh, it's just a matter of making a smaller rectangle with the dough. Um, to make smaller scrolls. So, yes, they're just really versatile and so popular, so cheap, and why would you buy them when you can make them in your Thermomix? So how long have we got? Six seconds to go. There we go. Now it's asking to add 500 to 520 grams of baker's flour. And the, the other great thing is about your Thermomix, here's my flour tub and it's just straight from the pantry you don't need a cup of this or a cup of that you know the thermomix will weigh it straight out for you so I'm just weighing out a fair bit of flour in this one which is great because it makes a lot of dough there we go now the next step is um, just to mix that all together on speed five for five seconds. And then we'll go into our um, kneading function, which has got the little picture of the wheat on it. And it'll just knead that dough for one minute and then it'll be ready to set aside to prove. So while that's kneading, if we're short on time, Tammy, I can go on to the... Um, uh, Putting them together, if you like. Yeah, because so, you've yep. got you, you have got a dough already yeah. ready to go, don't you? Yeah, and I've got my beautiful glider board, so I can easily move my thermomix over. And here is some dough that I made earlier. Can everybody? Oh, yeah. Maybe put it to the side where you've just got your little bowls, if possible. But Yep. Uh, is that better? Or is that Perfect. all right? Yep. Okay. Great. Excellent. So you can use rolling pins and be really neat about it, but I usually do as well. So it's all about just making a large rectangle with your dough. And as I was saying before, I'll just interrupt for a moment, see, just to show you how easy it is. There's the dough all ready to go well you know prove it for about half an hour and I just wrap it up in this um silicon thermomap which you can get on the mix shop as well they're fantastic probably the one product that I recommend all new owners get and that is the silicon thermomap so that was pretty easy to make that dough now I've got my big rectangle and I'll just grab my spatula that comes with the Thermomix and I'll just spread on the uh, spinach that we chopped earlier. Okay, so like I said before, you can change it. You can put your own toppings on. Cheese and Vegemite is another popular one in this house. Everybody just demolishes these. Uh, for years when the kids were at school, 
I was probably making at least three batches a week. I actually make it with all the leftover pizza toppings. I normally throw them in after I've done pizzas and put some cheese with it and then I can just pop, literally tip the bowl on the dough and make Fantastic. pizza sauce. That's a really good idea, Tammy. Okay, I'm just going to grab my I do like spatula. the idea of not washing the bowl, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just puts a little bit of, like, the, the dough's got a little bit of um, green specks of spinach through, but it's lovely. Looks nice, tastes not nice. Well, the older I get, the more environmentally conscious I get. And to me, that that's what Thermomix is all about. Um, less wastage, good food, less produce, process, I mean. Okay. So I did put too much cheese on, but, hey, that's okay. Um, you can do it with less. So we just got our rectangle, spread the spinach, um, scattered the cheese, and then we just roll that up into a log. Now, if you're at all worried, when you're doing this on your own, the Thermomix actually tells you everything step by step. And on this particular recipe, there's a couple of um, videos to watch. So what I'm doing now is actually on a video on your Thermomix screen when you're making it on your own. So we're just going to roll that up into a nice log there. Going to get my... Um, rose gold, one of my rose gold oven trays. This is the medium one. And I'm going to cook them on that. And I'm just going to use my spatula. Never use a knife on your silicon mat because silicon is made up of glass and we don't want to cut into that silicon. Um, these ones are quite big. Um, like I said before, just if you're wanting to make smaller ones or, you know, tiny ones for a baby or a, or a toddler, just make, you know, quite a few small rectangles and use the same process. So, Kim, you were talking about that these are a big money saver. I actually, mm -hmm. I've, I've got a six-year-old and these to me are a massive time saver um, as well as money saver, but sanity. Like I literally have to just grab one out of the freezer in the morning and that's the lunchbox done. A hundred percent. It's it's a fresh um, bakery product that you can just so easily have on hand, isn't it, Tammy? Yeah, sure is. Mm -hmm. Now, Kim, do you want to show us what they look like now? And then we might. Yep. So if yep. you just hold it up to the camera just so everyone can see. If you want exact perfect little scrolls you can use fishing line you can use um dental the, floss yeah you just make sure you don't get the mint one unless you're doing a you know chalk mint scroll of sorts for desserts um but yeah and just make sure you don't cut it like um kim said so the yeah. little green scrapers also work really well for for cutting them up too yeah Delicious. So this is make it this has made a dozen big ones i'll pop them in the oven on 200 for about 20 25 minutes and then they'll be beautiful Delicious. Thank you, Kim. Class. We will come back to you That's at the okay. end to see what they look like. Lovely. Thanks, Tammy. And now we're going to go over to the lovely Evie, who is going to be making some delicious food for us, one of my favourites. I've never actually made it myself. Oh, well, it's actually very easy. So I'm going to be making tung, which is a um, – garlic dip that you'll often see at kebab shops or if you've ever um, gone to get um what is it called a doner kebab sometimes the tum is an option or they sell it in these tiny little tubs now the process of making tum is very similar to the process of making mayonnaise it's emulsif emulsification it takes a little bit longer than mayonnaise to get that jelly like consistency that is characteristic of a good tum so it only has four ingredients, which is fantastic, um, and they're simple ingredients. I haven't bought tum in probably over 10 years because I make it, but I quickly had a Google search and it's $6 to buy 180 grams, a small tub of 180 grams at Woolworths at the moment. 
we're going to be making nearly half a kilo of tum for a fraction of that price. So mm -hmm. let's get started. Um, our four ingredients are a non-flavoured oil. So you don't want to use olive oil. You want something like sunflower oil, vegetable oil or grapeseed oil for your tomb. I'm just using vegetable oil today. And we want to put in 400 grams into the bowl. So that goes straight in. Okay, a little over, doesn't matter. And the next ingredient is our lemon juice. So lemon juice is going to help this oil to emulsify when we put the garlic in. So we put in 40 grams of lemon juice and we're just going to mix that for about a minute for it to start the emulsification process on speed four. Now, can you guys still hear me with the thermomix going in the back? Perfect. So while that's doing its minute, um, I'm going to explain about the garlic. So the recipe uses 75 grams of garlic, which is, I found for me, it was one and a half bowls. And this is the size of the bowls that I was using. So one and a half of these would be equivalent to my 75 grams of garlic. If your bowl has got green sprouts, coming out of the garlic cloves, you actually want to remove that because that will give your tongue um, a hot sensation on the tongue when you're eating it. So if you see any green sprouts, cut that clove in half and remove the green sprout from the centre. Unless you don't mind a really hot garlic bit, it's totally up to you. I just find it's a lot lighter when you've removed any green from those cloves. And the fourth ingredient we're going to use is a teaspoon of salt. I'm watching a cook. So, uh, watching a cook started 20 minutes ago. Okay, so the next step is to remove this emulsion into a jug. And you'll see that the oil has combined very nicely with that lemon juice, which is exactly what we want, because this is what we're going to use once we've chopped our garlic. Okay, so that just sits aside for now. And we're going to add our 75 grams of garlic cloves, followed by the teaspoon of salt. And what we want to do is put 50 grams of this emulsion to start off with. So just 50 grams of this goes in initially. So 48 is close enough. Now we're going to pop our lid on and start blending this for about three minutes. And this process can take quite a while because um, once it starts emulsifying, we're going to be trickling the rest of this emulsion into the bowl through the lid. If um, anyone is not aware, your lid has a seal on one side that contacts the lid of the thermomix and has gaps on the spout end. Not only does this allow you to direct your steam, but it allows liquids to go into your bowl. So I'm going to be pouring this oil onto this part of my lid, and from there it's going to trickle slowly inside the bowl, similar to a mayonnaise, but it's going to take between five to eight minutes to fully emulsify. So I'm gonna start this process, and Tammy's going to um, pop everyone yes. across. Oh, before we go, can I mention, I don't know if anyone knows what the current special is with the TM6 this month. Can I mention that, Tammy? Sure can. Okay. So this month, um, until the 7th of February, when you buy a Thermomix TM6, you get a set. So you get a 1.3 litre and a 650ml vacuum seal container, as well as the vacuum seal wand. So to show you how these work, the vacuum seal wand comes with five reusable vacuum sealable bags and it's cordless, which is fantastic. And the way these seal, you can release the air. You heard that? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard that, but that was the air yeah, coming out of the container. There's a lovely little tray at the bottom here to keep your food from sitting in any liquid or condensation. And these greens have been here. I went on holidays for 10 days. And these were in my fridge for a week before we went on holidays. 
And my sage is still looking quite fresh in that vacuum seal. So to seal it, you simply put on the lid, put the wand in the center and press the button. And I don't know if you can hear that, it's sucking the air out. When this little button pops in, that's when you know that the air has been completely sucked out of your container. There we go. And you stop and that goes straight in your fridge. So two of these and a wand with the five sealable bags is the gift this month at a value of $132. Thank you, Evie. We might watch you just for 30 seconds, start just so they can see how slowly you pour and then we will come yep. back to you. Perfect. Okay, so the first step is actually three minutes just on speed five and then you scrape down the sides and then you start emulsifying again and start pouring. So we're just going to do, I'm just going to do three minutes initially. So this is chopping during those three minutes. That's going to completely blend the garlic into a paste in that oil. And that after the three minutes, when I'm going to start pouring slowly at the top and into the corners. What's up? Chopping set. Okay, we are going to move over to the lovely Mel, who is going to show you some of our very cool little things with our high heat. Evie, nice segue. And what I love is that we love these um, vacuum seal containers because I use them a lot as well. So they are a great gift with purchase. I'm going to show you a bit of a hack tonight of something that, I do as a different meal for my family that's really quick. Now, to kill time a little bit more, I'm going to use both thermomixes so that you're not sitting here for a little bit longer, even though it's not long. One of my favourite recipes to make is basil pesto. So I just use the basic recipe off the basic cookbook, and it's really simple, and I just follow your steps. So it's my 80 grams of Parmesan cheese. I'm just going to change my Parmesan cheese. And I've got one garlic clove in there as well. I'm going to hit next. And we're going to mill that. 15 seconds on speed. I can hear that's done, so I'm going to skip that. Hey, where we're at with our parmesan, it's milled. My next step is actually 30 grams of pine nuts. So you'll see them popped in. I then add my 80 grams of fresh, fresh basil leaves. So like Evie, we've actually got our basil leaves just in this vacuum seal container and keeps them really nice and fresh. So any of your herbs are wonderful in there. Okay, I'll add those. And then I've got 150 grams of olive oil. So you use the oil that you Come on, Neil. Not this is big for no one. So it's such a lovely, fresh, you can use is my daughter loves this as on pasta and, and just as a dip as well. So then you can add a touch of salt to it. It's just meant to be half a teaspoon. Stop going a little bit. It stops the oxidization for me. You might. And then put the lid for 20 seconds. Okay. And then say that's done as well. I'll have a look at it. Through the bowl, it's actually done. So I'm going to take that off. We're going to use that and I'll show you where we'll use that in a moment. I'm just going to put it in front there. So that's my basil. Now, my next, 
is I make my chicken. So anyone that likes sautéing chicken for lunch boxes and things like that, this is a great recipe. It's just a so what you can do is you can go through the high heat collections, the recipes, the collections, or even the articles to learn a little bit more about high heat. But you can actually just use one or a just to use high beef, whatever you choose. Okay. Mel, your sound keeps going in and out a little bit. Yeah. Laura, can you hear Mel? Um, she cuts in and out, but like I was reading her mouth. <laughs> I knew what she was saying, but yeah, she's cutting in and out a bit. I can't hear you. At oh, yes. I think maybe the AirPods were cutting in and out. It happens. Yeah. Mm, not well. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. So, basically, the recipe I'm going to do now is to saute chicken. So, there is a recipe just to saute chicken quick. I've never played it. Mel, it's sorry, gone. can you just come back over near your speaker just to, it's, it's very hard to hear you. It's gone bad again. It's like while you were close to your computer, we could hear you, and then when you went behind the Thermomix, it's not. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to go through this. Okay. So basically what you do is you it's, it is very difficult to hear you. What we might do, Mel, just while you do that, I'll just quickly cut to Evie for a second um, while she's just doing that first part. Yep. Okay, so can you guys hear me? Yep. Great. So as you can see, I'm wrestling this quite slowly here. Whoops, let me just, I've got a, me um, a message on my screen that is blocking my view here. Okay, so I'm drizzling this quite slowly. Um, the first three minute step, the goal was to get a paste out of that garlic and initial amount of emulsion. And then you start drizzling. And the guide is, it should take you approximately four minutes to pour this. So it is a very slow pour. When you're making something like mayonnaise, you can actually fill the rim to the rim of this lid and let it pour in on its own. But um, garlic with oil can be a little finicky, and if you pour too fast, it can actually yes. split. So that's why I'm taking my time while I'm pouring this onto the lids. We look forward to seeing the finished product. Um, Mel is not showing as being there at the I'm moment. Here, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. I'm using, let me just start that. Okay, I'm going to use my phone as audio. Hopefully that works. We can hear you perfectly. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so sautéed chicken. So it's just a high heat recipe. I'm hoping you guys know where I'm up to on this. Okay, so you can actually, with this particular recipe, you can have it that you can do the garlic and onion with it. I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to do some oil. This particular recipe to saute the chicken strips, it actually is really handy for lots of different choices of what you want to do, for so little thighs and things like that. Just going to break that seal. Okay, so I will skip adding the garlic and sauteing that. Now I'm going to add my 250 grams of chicken. I've just stripped... Um, chicken breast up, and you just add it evenly around the blades, just making sure it's not all clumped in one area. Next is a little bit of salt and pepper. You can, if you like, because this is something that I do for my family regularly. I, add, I do this chicken like this, 
just to add into wraps and things like that. So you can actually add a little bit of soy sauce and things like that to give it a little bit of flavour. Even putting a couple of drops of sesame oil can be quite nice in here too. Okay, so we're adding the splash guard to it and that's going to cook for seven minutes. So normally when we're sauteing up a little bit of chicken to go on something, seven minutes is a long time and you'll end up with lots of splatter. Okay, because we're sauteing this in the Thermomix, I've got no splatter and I'm walking away and it's going to be beautiful. My next dish that I'm going to make in this one, so what I would do, I'd make my pesto, I'd do my chicken, then I'd do my veggies as my next step. And what I'm going to use for this recipe is one of my favourites. I'm just going to mix it out of that. And this favourite recipe of mine is chicken teriyaki. Now, chicken teriyaki is amazing. It's a great meal. But what I love about it is I love those vegetables partway through. So what you can do with any recipe is you can have open up that recipe, scroll up, and go to the step you want to start the recipe at. So I'm actually going to start at step two. I'm going to start at the vegetable stage and add my vegetables here. Okay? So I've got my veggies. In yet another one of these, one of these um, vacuum seal containers. This is the large one. This is a pretty cool one. This one you can bake a whole thing of lasagna in it. Okay, and I've chopped these up and they're still really nice and fresh and ready to roll. You must let that air out. Okay. So, Mel, that how did how does somebody get that new one? Beg your pardon? How does somebody get the new one that we have? Uh, They're got, very well, large. You just, you just wait. I'm going to give you some information about that in a moment. Okay, so with this particular one, I'm going to add my veggies. I've pre-measured what I've got in my cupboard. I've got some carrots, some baby corn, some broccoli, zucchini, and some capsicum. So they are my choices. Yeah. And then to that, I'm going to add a splash of oil, not a lot, and go to the high heat section. And hit done and hit next. Okay, so now I've got my veggies sauteing as well. So we've got chicken, veggies, we've got the basil pesto in the front. So the basil pesto, I'm going to contain it out. Right, well then here. And I'm hoping if I go to this screen, you'll be able to see where I'm at. All right. So with this, I'm going to add it to yet another one of these little vacuum seal containers. Are you getting the idea that I love these containers, guys? They are the best. I think we're if all predicted to them. Straight into the vacuum seal container, it will remain vibrant and green for me. Okay, by taking the air out, it reduces the chances of oxidization, so it lasts a lot longer. I previously have always just added it straight into a little glass jar with oil on top. I'll still put a touch of oil on top. But nowhere near as much as I would before because the air is removed when I've used this vacuum seal container. So I don't have to worry about that. Okay. So putting that there like that, putting a touch of oil. Actually, I won't put oil because we're going to use some in a second. I'll put the lid on and I'll show you how it actually vacuum seals up. Okay, and then there it goes. Okay, now Tammy, I heard you ask me a question a moment ago. And I did. It was, how on earth do you get that that large vacuum seal? Well, Tammy, there's lots of things you can get, and there's lots of things you've seen tonight demonstrated that are all available. 
for everyone to get as a host reward. So just by having two people to your home, your consultant coming along and learning and having fun together, you can earn rewards. So you've already seen Kim using the Thermomat. That's one of our rewards. You've seen Evie and I both use the vacuum seal. Well, guess what? The limited edition large vacuum seal is available as a host reward. There's no other way to get it. It's pretty cool. You've seen Kim use the glider board. If that's on your wish list, host a demonstration. You can get that too. There's quite a number of different things. You might be sitting there saying, I've already hosted before. Well, guess what? We've got lots of new toys for you to play with. So have a look, have a chat to your consultant who invited you here tonight and find out what would interest you to host a demonstration and get a hold of some of these goodies. Okay, still got mess everywhere. I'm a very messy kid, you would hate this. I've got stuff piled on the floor everywhere too. Now, we have a minute for one, and a, well, a minute and five, and a minute and 40 for our dinner to be served. So Mel, can I ask you a question? How long have you been a consultant for? Me? Yeah. Oh, 11 years, <laughs> a little bit long. <laughs> and what do, and what do you love about working with Thermomix? What do I love? I love just going out and having fun. I love eating. Can you tell? <laughs> um, I love trying new food, and I just love people meeting new people and different conversations that come up. I kind of like that. It's not really. It's a job. I. It's supposedly a job. I kind of laugh when people tell me I'm doing a job because it's not really a job. But look, there's another host reward for you guys. Um, you've, you've actually yeah. all been using another host reward too, which is Cookie Do subscription. Exactly. So for those that don't know, you can get that as a, a host reward as well. There's always more host rewards. It's pretty cool. And guess what? Here comes another one, an oval survey server. You'd be surprised at what you can get as host rewards, guys. You can. Okay. So my family hate this, but I do it anyhow because I'm the, just that kind of mum. Oh, there goes the chicken. She's ready. And I always put tomato in. So I just use my knife straight out of the um, sharp tomato, straight out of the toolkit. And this is such a great toolkit, this toolkit. It's the knives, this little baby, it cuts straight through a piece of pumpkin. And it's amazing. It's got a great um, peeler. It's got an ice cream scoop or and scissors. It's got a really good serrated knife for when you're making um, biscotti, things like that. So it's pretty cool. Look, this is dinner's ready, guys, and I'm not ready. Okay. <laughs> Who loves that? Dinner's ready and I'm not. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Let me show you. All right. There's my chicken. Can you see that? And some of that has... Oh, now it's got green, but it has the actual caramelization on that. So that's amazing. This is so great for those lunch boxes. We do this on wraps every day for the kids. Okay, there's my chicken. And then my next one is my veggie, which very I healthy dish. Love these veggies. Love, 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 love. Look at that. Beautiful, crisp veggies, not overcooked, beautiful you go. If you like chicken teriyaki, you definitely have to give that a go, especially if you've got a TM6. Yeah, it's such a good one. And all generally, all the sauce ingredients will be basically stuff most people have in their pantry as well. Through the centre there again, just undo that seal. Yum. And I'm just going to add... Where'd the toolkit go? You saw where I stashed that. Here we go. Because you can't cross-contaminate the pesto, can you? Nice big dollop of pesto through there and stir that through. And that's it done. It's such a beautiful, light dinner. Very healthy too. Yeah, healthy and tasty. And it's a good prep ahead one. And if you need, you know, to bulk it up or anything like that, doing some rice, doing some quinoa. Anything like that as well. You can add more. You can even do it 
twice the chicken if you want more chicken. I always find that's enough for my guys. But yeah, so there's Perfect. Jenna, ready to roll. Thank you, Mel. You're very welcome. Now I think we're shooting back to Evie's kitchen for her to do the next stages of her fatouche salad. Yes, so the tum is done and it took, I left the timer up, so it took four minutes and 20 seconds to complete and it is absolutely amazing. Let me just scoop some out for you guys so you can see. You're going to make us all jealous. Thick. Oh, it's sliding off my spatula. It's so jelly-like. It's like trying to catch jelly. Can you see how that wobbles? Whoops, there we go. So it's really got a wobble to it. And that's what you want. If yours hasn't got that wobble, you need to just keep keep it going and emulsifying. I'm going to just direct this down so you can see how much I've got here. It's a massive amount, not a little 30 ml tub that you get at the store. It is literally, I'd say close to half a kilo here because we used 400 grams of oil and 75 grams of garlic plus the 40 grams of lemon juice. So my husband is going to absolutely love this. There we go. So that is just beautiful and pure white, which is how it should look. All right. Now, the next dish we're making is the fatouche. So I'm going to change bowls quickly rather than... Um, doing a pre-clean, which I could do, but if you've got two bowls, why not just change? And the fatouche is not a recipe from Cookie Do or from the recipe community. We will be sending you a copy of it in the ebook we're sending. Um, how this recipe originated is we had run a Middle Eastern cooking class a long time ago and one of our consultants had shared her um, personal Fatouche recipe, which is amazing. And we actually converted it to the server mix. Now, what stands out about this recipe is some of the recipes on Cookie Do ask you to hand chop all your veggies into perfect cubes. And if you're a fussy kind of person that likes to have the salad looking perfect and cubed, then by all means, go ahead and hand chop. But today I'm going to show you in manual mode how to do the whole thing in the server mix. No hand chopping into little cubes required. So what we're going to start with, which I've already pre-done, is I took two little pita breads, and these are very easy to make the dough yourself, flatten them out. And what I have done is I've taken this oil mister from the mix shop and I simply sprayed each pita bread and put them in the oven for 10 minutes until they became crispy. So you can hear that they're quite crispy like potato chips. So you want them to be like a potato chip texture. And we put those outside because we're going to crumble them over the top of the salad later. Now, has anyone tried chopping lettuce in their Thermomix before? I've heard you can wash Did your anyone? lettuce. Well, I'm going to show you how to wash and chop your lettuce at the same time in the Thermomix. So if you try chopping lettuce on its own, likelihood is it's going to mush. Um, but there's a trick. What we're going to do is we're going to put our lettuce, which I've really roughly chopped. So this was a whole cos lettuce and I literally just cut it in two. And we're going to throw all of these big leaves into the bowl. Now to prevent it from becoming mush when we're chopping it, what we're going to do is add 800 mils of water. What that does is it lets the lettuce move around freely without the bottom leaves with the pressure of the other lettuce leaves pushing down on them without them becoming pure, basically. So what we want is 800 mils of water to go in. And also this water is going to wash the lettuce in the process of chopping it so that we don't have to pull apart the leaves and pre-wash them all. All right, now once we put our lid on, we've got our lettuce, we've got our water, we're going to do four seconds on speed four. And remember, I'm doing this manually, but you could decide to program it into your created recipes on Cookie Do if it's a recipe that you love. So I'm going to set the timer rather than just turning the speed dial because I need it to stop exactly at four seconds and not go over. And then I'm going to turn speed four. Okay.
All right, now let's have a look. The next step is we're going to strain this through the simmer basket. So I'm going to do that over my sink and bring it back to show you guys the, the chopped lettuce. So uh, the water's going to spill if I tilt too far, but can you see how beautifully that lettuce is chopped in the water? So I'm just going to strain that through my simmer basket now. Oops. Okay, let me direct my camera down so you can see. So that lettuce is beautifully chopped, not too fine, not too coarse. And we're just going to make sure we've got all of it out because the next step is I'm just going to dry my bowl before we continue to the next step of the salad. Now, some tips on this salad um, or variations rather, is you don't have to put the lettuce if you don't want to. I know that some fatouche salads don't have lettuce. Instead, they opt for putting red and green capsicums. And of course, you're welcome to do that as well. All right. If there's one or two lettuce leaves left in the bowl, it doesn't matter. We're going to make our dressing next and they'll just be blended into that. So if there's like little specks of lettuce, it doesn't matter. Um, you do want to drain off any excess water from your bowl, just around the sides. And we're ready for our next step. So this lettuce just goes aside. Okay, so next we're going to chop two cloves of garlic. Just pop those in. And we're going to turn that to speed three for seven seconds. This time I'm not going to bother with the timer. I'm just going to go up. Seven for three seconds. I think I said that back to front. Did I say, say speed three for seven seconds? Speed seven for three seconds. So there's our finely chopped garlic. Push all that down to the bottom. Oh gosh, that is very garlicky. And now we're going to add in 60 grams of olive oil. Bring up my scales. And pour in 60 grams of olive oil, followed by lemon or lime juice. So your choice, whether you use lemon or lime juice. I'm using a lime today just to give it a little bit of a flavour enhancement. And my tip is, I showed you before I just had put lemon juice into the tool, but I'm going to show you a different way to do this. So the first thing you want to do is roll this on your bench to soften it up and release some of the juice before you cut it. And then you can actually tear your scales and use your spatula to squeeze the juice, whoops, onto your lid instead of having to use a citrus juicer. And as we mentioned before, the liquid pours into the bowl, but the benefit of doing it onto the lid is any seeds that might be inside your citrus get trapped on the top of the lid. So I'm just going to keep squeezing. And there's a seed that popped out and I can see it's sitting there. It's not going in the bowl. Keep squeezing. So what we want is, where is my lemon juice? 40 grams of lemon or lime juice. So that's approximately one good sized lime or one good sized lemon. So squeeze that side. And I'm just going to pour in some pre-squeezed as well to make it up. 40. Close enough, 36, Now, after we've put the oil, the juice we're going to put in, you have a choice here of your spice, some sumac or za'atar. I'm using za'atar today because I have some lovely homemade za'atar from a friend. And you want two teaspoons of that. So that's your seasoning for your salad. If you prefer to use sumac, it gives a more sour taste contrast in the salad, which is quite nice. And then we're going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, and there's an optional ingredient which you don't have to use, but it's a teaspoon of pomegranate molasses. And this is the Cortis brand, which is found in Woolworths, usually around where the chickpeas and things are, the dried chickpeas. Um, if you can't find it, it's not a worry. What this does is it has a very... Um, Sour, almost like, I don't know if you guys have tasted the sour worm lollies. It has a very sour taste 
and it just adds a nice um, bit of zing to the dressing, but it is entirely optional whether you use that or not. All right, so what's after that, we're going to mix this just for 10 seconds on speed six. So this is our salad dressing. And again, we are actually emulsifying here. Okay. So when doing this recipe in the past, I used to do the cucumbers, chop them separately, put the tomatoes in, chop them separately. But then we discovered that you can actually do them all together. So what we're going to do at this point, we're going to add in all our vegetables. And here's what our dressing looks like. So the dressing is in there to give a little bit of extra movement. And what we're going to add is a quarter of a red onion. If you don't like raw onion, go less. So I put a very small quarter of a red onion. I'm going to add some cucumber, very roughly chopped. Big chunks is fine. You just want to roughly chop so it can move in the bowl. Following that, we're going to have a handful of mint and a handful of parsley. The recipe says seven sprigs of each, but I tend to be very generous with my herbs because I like lots of herbs in my salads. So I just put a big handful in and your tomatoes roughly chopped. So if you're using cherry tomatoes, just cut them in half. If you're using Roma tomatoes, I just quartered and did two chops of them. Now, one thing to note is to ensure that your tomatoes are not overripe. You want them to have a little bit of firmness so that the blade is going to chop them effectively rather than mush them into the other ingredients. All right, so once we've added that, um, we're going to chop this for, for it's very precise, um, two seconds on speed four and a half. And then you're going to check. And if it needs to be done again, you can do it a second at a time because everyone likes their fatouche slightly different um, chunkiness, I suppose. You might want it finer or you might want it chunkier. So I'm going to put the timer on the two seconds and do speed 4.5. <laughs> okay, so it's and this is where we check. So this is actually quite nice. It's a little chunky, but I'm actually liking this texture. Can you see that? You wouldn't want it too much finer than that. Um, so I'm not going to do an extra two seconds. And at this point, it's really easy. What you do is you transfer that into a salad bowl. Like so, make sure you get all that beautiful dressing out of the bowl into your serving dish. Beautiful. And then we're going to add the lettuce, which was in my steamer basket straining. So that goes on top. And then we're just going to stir that to combine before crumpling our pita bread on top. And because you've added all your seasonings already, there is no need to, um, to add any salt or extra seasonings to it. It was already in the salad dressing. So stir that through well. Now, another tip I have is if you were wanting, this is quite a big bowl here. I, I don't know if it's coming across as how big it actually is, but it's a very big salad bowl. But if you wanted to make a larger quantity, I would do a second batch. It takes literally seconds and you're going to get a better consistency doing two batches rather than trying to overload your bowl. Now, the pita, I'm simply going to crumble it through the salad like this. I am going to be making this this weekend. It is so easy, Tammy. It is like not having to chop anything and all the textures and flavours in this. We had this for dinner tonight and my husband was like, this is a really nice salad because um, we hadn't had it in a while. And he said, is this for tush? And I said, yes, it is. So you give that one quick stir and there you have a gorgeous fetouche salad. Now I'm going to share two more tips. If you're not going to be eating this straight away, 
keep your dressing separate and dress the salad when you get to where you're going if you're taking it somewhere. Otherwise, your vegetables will go soggy. And the same with your pita. Wait until you're going to serve it before crumbling the pita and putting the dressing into the salad. Thank you, Evie. Thank you. Enjoy enjoy your lunch tomorrow, I guess, if you've already had it for dinner. I will. <laughs> <laughs> or I might swing by on my way home. Uh, Laura, we are over to you and you can explain what yeah. you got up to today. Yes, yeah, so I've made this ahead because it needed to cool down basically and I wanted to save everyone's time watching this. Since we're online, I can do that. So I'm actually just going to be sharing a video um, of me making this dish and you can ask questions at the end, at the end or as we go along, but hopefully this technology works well for us. And here we go. Hello, today I wanted to cook a recipe from our Thermomix magazine, which you can get in news agencies, supermarkets, or from the Thermomix website. It's called the Quick Veggie Pasta Salad and um, like that. This is a really good recipe if you wanna just have lunch ready in the fridge, ready to go. So it's in the grab and go section. Um, yeah, so we'll just get started. So first of all is to have a, an echelot and some herbs. I'm using some oregano and parsley. And we're going to chop all that for a few seconds on the speed six. The recipe said five seconds, but I could just hear that it was done after three seconds. So um, if you're ever not happy with it, you can always scrape down and do it again, but I am happy with it. Looks good to me. So I will be setting this aside. Using, I like to use the flexible spatula. The spatula that came with your thermomix is also another good one that I like because it's nice and flexible. Careful you don't get your face in there or you get the onion happening. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to grate our parmesan cheese. So we have 50 grams of parmesan cheese. Just whenever you're doing something hard in your thermomix, chop it in little pieces to just put less pressure on your blades over a lot, an extended period of time. So um, yeah, so don't just put in a whole giant chunk of Parmesan cheese. It would work, but then you're just wearing down on your blades. So I've cut that in pieces. Um, generally the recipes always tell you what to do. So to grate Parmesan cheese, it's 10 seconds, speed 10. So now I'm going to add 100 grams of sour cream and 100 grams of mayonnaise, which you can also make in your summer mix very easily. Oh, I'll show you the then. Nicely powdered, beautiful, no additives, just smells fresh. Um, you're also saving money by buying it in a block rather than grated, but it's, yeah, it's healthier without the additives. Um, sour cream, mayo, and half a teaspoon of pepper. So that's being added to the Parmesan cheese. So basically what we're doing first is making the dressing for our pasta salad. And I'll just scrape down the parmesan a little bit better into it. And then I'm just going to mix this on speed four, basically just to combine the cheese in with um, the liquid. Just for a few seconds. That'll do. And then I'm going to add it in with my echelon and herbs. Um, we're going to give that a stir. Looks all nicely whipped together there. So we do want all of this out because um, then we're going to wash the bowl or rinse it. Don't need to dry it because the next step is to boil our pasta. So um, it's okay to have a wet bowl. We're adding water. Okay. So just getting out as much as I can there. That looks good. Let's get that off. So that's all out. And it says to clean the bowl. I have another one. This is what's really handy about when you've got two bowls. And we're going to boil the pasta. So I'm putting my uh, the water 
So I'm putting my scales on. We want a liter of water, which there is a liter mark in there, which you can go to, or you can just weigh in a kilo of water, whatever. And we're going to boil that. And once it's boiled, then maybe faster. So the recipe says um, boil about seven minutes or until boiling. So what I'm actually going to use is the kettle mode because that's going to tell me exactly when it's boiling. Um, so yeah, just, and then while that's happening, I'll stir this. And also while it's happening, I'll go get my pasta out of my pantry and cut up the broccoli and have that ready because we're going to steam that while the pasta boils. So that has boiled, the water is nicely boiling. So now we're going to add um, 250, yes, grams of pasta. Um, it's pasta of choice. And I'm just adding some spirals because what I have wouldn't matter. And a teaspoon of salt milled in the thermomix. 10 seconds to mill rock salt into powder, no additives. And we get that cooking. So we want to cook this for, oh, I gotta get out of kettle mode. Eight minutes. On Varoma, I'm putting it on reverse, which you can find in your speed circle and on the very softest speed setting. So actually it says to go to speed two. I have never cooked pasta on speed two. Let's see how it goes. I have had this before and it um, was good. So, um, and so in the Varoma, we are adding some broccoli and I've just chopped it into little florets. So that will steam while the pasta cooks and it will be ready at the same time. Okay, that eight minutes is up. Now, when you're opening your Varoma, if you open the lid away from you so the steam doesn't come in your face and use the lid as a drip tray, you're not going to get all the mess on your bench. And we have our pasta here. Basically what I'm going to do now, I actually always drain my pasta through my Varoma. So it doesn't matter that the broccoli's in there really. Actually, it's fine. I can just put the broccoli in this bowl. It wouldn't have mattered either way. So I'll just drain this, the pasta. Um, basically a colander is just another thing you can declutter out of your kitchen once you've got a thermomix. I'll uh, give that a bit of a shake to get the excess water out and then pour the pasta into my bowl with the broccoli now i just need to let this cool because obviously for the pasta salad we don't want hot ingredients that we add our dressing to so i'm going to let this cool for i don't know quite a while once it's cooled i'll be back to finish it off okay so it has been half an hour and i've determined that my pasta and broccoli are nicely cooled and so now we need to be a little bit gentle so we don't break up the pasta or the broccoli, but we're just adding in our dressing as well as some cut up cherry tomatoes and a cubed yellow capsicum. It wouldn't matter what color you use and you can use other veggies if you want, but I think um, with the green from the bro broccoli, the red from the tomatoes and the yellow from the capsicum, it's um, a good color combination. If you want it to look pretty, it has a fresh summer pasta salad um but yeah you can use anything if you want to add in some protein or like you could add in some shredded chicken or a tin of tuna um i think this is really good just the way it is we ate this my our branch manager tammy made this for us at a christmas party we went to recently and um that's where i tried it and loved it so that's how i know this is going to taste delicious um but that is it it's ready and so the recipe determines that this will make six lunches. So now um, you could serve and eat it as is now, or if you section it out into six containers in your fridge, it's a grab and go ready um, over the next few days. Um, so I was going to put some in this um, glass container I have and just show you another thing that I love from the mix shop which is, I just want to get a good amount. You could also sprinkle some 
fresh basil or something like that over the top if you want some fresh herbs added. Um, but yeah, that's our pasta salad. I wanted to show you this little cute container from the mix shop that comes with a vac seal wand so that you can keep it fresher even longer. Um, and all you have to do is wait for the little nozzle to pop, which it just did. So that's ready to store in the fridge. And we've got our, and it, as you can see, it makes a lot. So that's our fresh summer pasta salad. Enjoy. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I was just saying we're all obsessed with those back seal containers, but um, they are awesome. And they come with bags as well. I have so many things in back sealed bags in my pantry, as well as the containers in my fridge. It's just awesome. Um, yeah, so that was me sharing the pasta. If you, if you had any questions about that, feel free to put them in the chat. I did also just want to share another opportunity we have at the moment. And that's for anyone who doesn't yet have a Thermomix or if you wanted another one or two or three because it's awesome having two on your bench as well. But we have an opportunity at the moment for anyone who wants to get a Thermomix TM6 by spending your time instead of spending your money. So normally our earn option is to sell six Thermomixes in your first 60 days, but at the moment it's a promotion to sell just four Thermomixes in your first 60 days. And that time starts after you've finished all your training. Um, so you've got time to train and be mentored by a team leader and get ready so that when your 60 days start, you're ready to um, share the Thermo love with the community, basically with your network, with the community, um, with whoever. And as four new households get a Thermomix on the bench, that's yours. Uh, if you don't sell all four, it goes down in a um, scale so that you get it reduced price. Uh, if you sell more than four in your 60 days, you, you actually just go on to earning money commission. And then once you've earned your Thermomix, you can stop being a consultant if you want to, or you can stay on and earn so many other great incentives as well as commission, which is a really good side hustle to have. Um, to be earning money while working super flexible hours, having fun, because while we're demonstrating the Thermomix, we're always having fun and smiling and laughing because everyone loves food. Um, but basically, I've loved being a consultant for, I've been, it's 14 and a half years now, and I actually came on to earn my own Thermomix. My plan was to quit, but I've stayed on because I love it. I love the incentives, the people, um, the flexibility, the income, everything about it. So this is an opportunity that all of you can enjoy. And if you already have a Thermomix, you're welcome to join us too and start earning commission from day one um, if you don't want to earn another one. And then once your 60 days ends, there are so many other goodies. There's pizza oven, a second Thermomix, the cutter, a second bowl set, um, the vac seal kit. We are always earning things. So packages will be turning up at your door constantly if you become a Thermomix consultant. So please let us know if you're interested um, because what we'll do is just get you some information and you don't need to let us know that you definitely want to join. Just let us know that you want info. We'll send you the info of what's involved and um, that way you can make a really good informed decision as to whether it's for you or not. Thank you, Laura. Yes. Now, I will swap to my screen very briefly and but we've got to I'm actually hanging out in the Waterloo office at the moment for anyone that hasn't actually been here we run classes from here we do training from here um we've done Facebook lives etc here uh Leah one of our other team leaders was going to be doing um some muesli bars for you as a prep ahead thing for back to school um for back to work for a lot of people. Uh, she has not been able to join us tonight. So I have put together what ingredients we did have on hand to make you a muesli bar of sorts that smells delicious and I can't wait to actually try it. So I have pre-made some to show you the finished product, but this one's actually really, really simple. So um, what I want to do is just show you, and Mel was actually showing you this on the Thermomix. So this is more for our people who aren't 
as familiar with the thermometers or the TM6 in particular. We have our home screen where you can actually cook using manual mode. If you swipe one way, we actually have uh, our guided recipes where it will walk you through every possible step. It will tell you when to turn the oven on. It will tell you when to wash trays and, and things like that. Um, and it does play some videos for the people that um, that's very beneficial for as well, or if you're not sure what they're talking about. There's also a wealth of knowledge um, that people have put into articles in here. There is a, an entire section dedicated to uh, baby food and feeding um, young children, etc. So definitely have a, a play with Cookie Do um, and the guided cooking component of your Thermomix. We do run cookie do sessions, so just reach out to your consultant um, and we can let you know when the next one is. If you actually swipe the other way, we have all our different modes. Now, we refer to the Thermomix as a smart connected kitchen and apart from me touching buttons, I shouldn't. Uh, the reason for that is that over time, we continue to add, or not us personally, but for Verk who make Thermomix, they add new modes all the time. So you have egg boiler mode. We have the new Thermomix sensor coming, um, which is amazing for perfecting breads and cakes and meats and all sorts of things. And it's fully interactive with your Thermomix. So um, definitely keep in touch with your consultant and we can always let you know when these things become available. But what I'm going to do is to show you what I'm doing with these muesli bars because they are very easy. I have melted some butter uh, whilst the class has been going. So you're not having to wait for that. I did pre-make one, so I've gone back to the bookmark. Uh, if we hit next, so this is just 90 grams of butter that we've melted. It's now asking us to add some rolled oats. I'm just going to add those ones in. I cheated. We have some plain rice bubbles in here, so that's what I'm going to use. We have some shredded coconut. If you didn't have shredded coconut, you could use desiccated coconut because the recipe is actually going to kind of chop up all of these ingredients. The same with our pepitas. You could use this. You could use sunflower seeds, chia seeds, anything like that. And then I've just got some ground ginger and I've actually added some uh, ground cinnamon as well into this particular mixture. Use what you have, use what you enjoy eating. And if there's things that you can't have due to allergies, there is always a way to work around it. We're just going to chop this up. And I'll show you what the consistency looks like before we add a couple of other bits and pieces. So it's just a, it's a, it's actually quite a wet mixture because we actually then bake it. So I'll get this spatula, I'll get all the sides down. And it won't matter if you actually have a couple of chunky little bits in there, that'll just add a little bit of different texture into your muesli bar. Here we go next. We've got some dried fruit. We have got some honey, and it is actually quite a lot of honey. Um, well, I think it is, but it, um, that's actually what the bars are called. So you'll see that in the ebook that I send out tomorrow, um, that they're actually called Sabrina's Honey Bush Bars. And I have never had them before, but Leah swears by them. And one egg. Put our lid on. Hit next. I'm going to chop for... 10 seconds. And then now it's actually telling us to um, put between the silicon muesli bar that you can actually get through the mix shop. I don't actually have one of those here in our Waterloo office, but what I do have is one of the new Lamington tins that um, we put on, I think, late last year. So I've just lined it because it is quite sticky. And I just want to be able to take this out. And then you're just going to shape it into the tray. 
And then I think you'd bake it for 15 minutes or so on 170, which Cookie Do will actually tell you to do that. You had a proper uh, little offset spatula. And I seems to have gone a little bit walkabout in the office. Or you could put um, bake, extra baking paper on the top if you wanted to, to flatten it out into your tray. But it is quite sticky mixture. This one does not have any seeds in it. Oh, sorry, not seeds, any nuts in it. So it is school friendly. Um, and I'm sure based on the, uh, the sweetness from the honey, the kids will love it. So we've got our tray ready to go into the oven. And then what it will look like once it's out. So if you don't have any of those those trays, you can just cook it in a normal size tray, square tray, whatever you've got. You could um, do anything and we'll just cut it up into some little slices. But if I can get Laura to actually kick off a poll for us, we've just got a couple of really quick questions. If you can help us by answering us, um, it will help us work out what our next class is. I don't have the poll option on oh, my don't. I can do that. And then what I'm going to do is just quickly show you one of the very cool little things that we have um, that just come to the mix shop, actually, which I will show you because um, then you can see them in what they look like. So I'll just launch this first. Is that showing, Laura? I don't have anything showing for me yet. I do. Oh. It's okay. showing. Maybe because I'm a co-host. Maybe. So for anyone that was interested, this is that magazine that Laura was talking to about. And uh, we do have some in, if you can't get it at um, your local Woolies, et cetera, there is still some on the mix shop. And we have got some here in Waterloo. This one, whilst Laura was actually showing hers, it actually made me think of this. So this actually came to the mix shop um, also mid last year. And it's a thermos, perfect for pasta salads, et cetera, like that for people going to work. But the exciting thing we have, especially back to school, is our new lunch boxes that they've worked on. So for anybody that hasn't seen these, which have been popping up. So it's actually got like a little freezy pouch that we pop into here. And then you can buy these extra little containers as well, um, all replaceable, et cetera, all movable in sizes. It comes with a fork, but these are very, very cute. And the colours are very, very cute. So there's a pink and blue, purple and green, little Spider-Man one. Well, I think it's Spiderman. So yes. Now, Kim, have you got your? Um, I have, Tammy. I am just. Oh, I want scrolls. <laughs> I know. I mean, they smell delicious. There's a beautiful scroll, and there's a dozen of them. And I'm surprised you don't have a room full of people wanting I will. to scroll. <laughs> I, I will. I've had a few heads duck, duck, duck themselves around the corner. Um, but how's that for $6? It's it's pretty incredible what you can make for not yeah. – even more so when you've got some of this stuff already at your home as well. Um, I quite often will make scrolls when I have not gone and bought any bread. Sometimes I make mm -hmm. bread, sometimes I buy it. But if it comes yep. to Sunday and I don't have any bread, I'll just make a batch of scrolls and then I'm done for the week anyway. Yeah. I mean, if you've bought them individually, even at, you know, $3, it's almost $40 So yeah. to buy all of them and you can make them for six and they're so much nicer. <laughs> you could buy yourself another Thermomix with savings just right there. Well, the Thermomix pays for itself, especially if you go onto, onto Zip or Harm, doesn't it? So True, true. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So... Sorry, go, Kim. Oh, no, that's okay. I'd, I'd finished. Go and enjoy eating a scroll. We will. <laughs> Thank you, Tammy. Thank you. 
Evie, did you need to show us anything else and rub it into us, your delicious dinner? What would you, uh, no. what would you serve your tomb with? Sorry? What would you serve your tomb with? If you have it, would you have it on the side of your salad or you have it with something different? So I'd actually mix some through. So if you're having the salad and you've got a lot of it left over, you can um, vary it up. So you could one day put a dollop of tomb through the salad, which is really delicious together. Um, the tomb goes beautifully on grilled, roasted or barbecued meats and chickens. Yum. You can use it as a dressing by if it's too thick, you can actually thin it with lemon juice and then put it in other salad dressings or through a rice salad or a pasta salad. It's really quite a versatile. It's not what I would call just a dip. It has so many different uses that you can do with it. So, yeah, yeah. I look forward it's to you teaching you us more. In, anything you want to garlic flavour in, add some to and there you go. You've got it. Mm, delicious. Laura, I know that your family has probably gobbled up your pasta. Lucky uh, perk of they making actually it did. They, the only part that's left was the ones that I put in the container. The rest all went for dinner, um, which wasn't planned. They all just started to come and eat it. And I was like, oh, okay, that's dinner. <laughs> it so, is a good dinner. It's a good dinner, good lunch. It was great. Like I just thing. cooked some chicken on the side. Um really quickly and it was delicious so this can be my lunch for tomorrow <laughs> if they don't steal it before then that's true. true mel has your family gobbled up your delicious treats your healthy treats <laughs> delicious we and healthy dinner. yeah we'll we will be having that for lunch tomorrow <laughs> enjoy well thank you very much everybody oh for my that. kids have that as lunch to take to school Oh, nice. I'm working on that with my son. He's definitely a scroll kid at the moment. Uh, did anybody have any questions for us? Well, you can definitely add them as host rewards as well. So just um, reach out to your consultant and they will let you know, Lynn. Uh, but, yeah, as you can tell, we do love the containers. We all like talking about the containers. Uh, and all the other things that we seem to, you know, get from time to time, which is awesome. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you for our lovely team leaders who have presented for you tonight. Um, greatly, greatly appreciated. If you have got any questions, definitely reach out. And if you've got ideas of what you would like to see next. There's a question. Us... Sorry. Yeah. A question that I've just got in chat. How long will the tomb last in the fridge? I thought it was only a few days. Is Evie well, still it's on? garlic, oil and lemon, so I'm assuming you could, it could, if it was in an airtight container well sealed, um, I'm assuming it would be probably up to a week. Um, I don't know how well it freezes. That's not something I've looked into simply because when I do make it, it, it goes in a couple of days. Um but you want to be definitely looking out for no yellowing around the edges of the container you've got it in and definitely no green because garlic can sometimes go green. I don't know if anyone is familiar with this. When you've chopped a lot of garlic and put it in the fridge, it can go green. You don't want to be eating that at all. So it's, as long as it's that pristine white colour and there's no yellowing around the edges, then it's probably still okay. But definitely I'd say no more than a week in the fridge. Oh. If it lasts that long. That's yeah, it lasts that I've long made it a few times. Time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whenever I've made it, the family have just found anything else that they can cook and eat to go with the tomb. <laughs> so, Does anyone have any other questions? If not, if you think of anything else, just let us know afterwards. Your consultant will be more than happy to help you. Thank you very much, ladies. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Tammy.